Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Lab 207 Webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and I'll be hanging out with you today as we come back for our first video in probably a year. The next couple of videos I'm going to make are going to be all about the AP Biology curriculum framework, because this year in AP Biology, we're going to be looking at the subject matter a bit differently than you have in the past. In your previous biology classes, you looked at information in discrete chunks. So you focused on like your cells and DNA and then genetics and maybe the human body and evolution and an ecology. In AP Bio we are going to look at big overarching themes and then information that fits together underneath those themes. Each of those themes is going to be known as a big idea. Big idea number one is all about evolution. So before I actually get into our video let me give you some things that you need to know or be able to do by the end of this video. The first one is to be able to understand the theme of Big Idea 1 and talk a little bit about it. And the second is to give a brief summary of each of the enduring understandings. Now before I go too much further, I need to talk to you about the organization of AP Biology. So I just mentioned the idea of a big idea. That is a big overarching theme that many topics will fit underneath. Within every big idea, there are enduring understandings. Enduring understandings are like big chunks of knowledge about a specific topic that you need to know. Each enduring Understanding is further broken down into essential knowledge. Essential knowledge are details that you need to understand in order to get the big topic. And then each essential knowledge is broken down into learning objectives. The learning objectives are specific things that you need to be able to do to understand your, or to demonstrate your understanding of the subject. So without further ado, Let's talk a little bit more about big idea number one, which is that evolution drives diversity and unity. So for the first couple months of our class together, we're going to talk about how evolution is responsible for the world that we see around us, or at least the living world that we see around us, at least. We're going to talk about natural selection, acting on variation. We're going to talk about the genetics of it. We're going to talk about evidences that support the idea of evolution. So big idea number one, it's all about evolution. Now, like I said, Big ideas are broken down into enduring understandings. So for big idea, number one, there are four enduring understandings. The first one, you need to forever understand that genetic change in a population over time is evolution. One of the things that we're going to focus on is changes in genotype. Now, if you remember from your bio class, genotype is the genes of an organism. If you are looking at a population as a whole, and genes within that population, evolution is a gene becoming more or less common in a population over time. So you could say you've got a population of people with blue eyes. If blue eyes became more, pop more common in the population of people over time, that population is said to have evolved. Another major thing that we'll look at within this enduring understanding is the idea that natural selection drives evolution and it drives evolution by working on the phenotypes of organisms. So you got your genotype, that is the genes that determine what goes on in your body. The outward expression of those genes is the phenotype. Environments act on phenotype and this is the idea of survival of the fittest. Some organisms are better adapted to an environment than the other their phenotypes are better suited to that environment, so natural selection works on the best phenotypes and it encourages those phenotypes to survive and reproduce. Other things that we'll talk about in this idea is the fact that there is a large body of evidence that supports the idea of evolution, and we'll kind of go into that evidence a little bit as well. Second enduring understanding that you need to understand is that organisms are linked by lines of descent from common ancestry. So this is the idea that all of the living world can be traced back to common ancestors. And some of the evidences that are used to go back to those common ancestors are DNA, fossil record, molecular genetics, organelles, things like that. Some of the major ideas that we will talk about is the fact that there are conserved processes and structures. A conserved process or structure is a process or structure that is found all the way back through the living record. Some examples of this would be the fact that all living organisms have DNA and RNA, and that DNA and RNA is composed of the five same bases, A, T, C, G, and U. Also, the genetic code is universal, so a gene that does one thing in a bacteria will do something different in a eukaryote. The idea is that if all organisms are related along a common line, and then there should be common themes seen in some of them. We'll spend time exploring those common themes. 
Enduring Understanding 1C is that life continues to evolve within a changing environment. So this is the thought that evolution did not stop billions of years ago. It is an ongoing process that we can observe in the world around us today. An example of this would be the bacteria you see on your screen there. That is MRSA. MRSA is a strain of bacteria that is resistant to multiple forms of antibiotics. Every time a new antibiotic comes out, it kills most of the bacteria, but the ones that have the variation that allow them to be resistant to that antibiotic will reproduce, forming a new strain of bacteria. So get the idea in your head that evolution is an ongoing process that we can still observe today. And finally, the last enduring understanding is that the origin of living system is explained by natural processes. So natural selection and evolution driving natural selection is on lockdown. We know what's going on there. There's tons of evidence. We can observe it in the world around us today, but the origins of life, so the very beginning, that leap from the inorganic non-living world to the organic living world is more difficult because we can't rewind the tape of life back three and a half or four billion years ago. So scientists have had to do their best to hypothesize conditions that they think may have been present on early Earth and then design experiments to see if those conditions could have formed the building blocks that now make up life. There have been tons of experiments done in this area. Some of them would be Miller and Urey, which you probably heard about. There's Oparn and Haldane. There's research around hydrothermal vents and molecules that can form in those conditions. All of these things are done as in an effort to provide support to the hypotheses that non-organic conditions could have formed organic life on Earth. And we'll spend time learning about those experiments. So that's it. Your whirlwind tour of big idea number one. The thing I need you to take away is that we will be talking about evolution driving the diversity of life for the next several weeks. Thank you for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and I hope we'll see you again.